let's look at an example of how lists can be useful. And this is kind of an elaborate example. Uh, it's not that elaborate, but it shows you the utility of a list by itself as an instrument of uh, queer, query or search. Here, so let's see, we have the um, football in, in Australia. And football, it's an old sport. And prior to 1897, they had the Victorian Football League, the VFL, which was, oh, since, I'm sorry, since 1897, Victorian Football League, which was replaced in 1990. It was supplanted by the Australian Football League, AFL. There are teams that have played in both FVL and AFL for decades. And every year, just like we have the Super Bowl, they have the premiership. So every year, one team wins. One team's the big winner. The premier gets the premier, is awarded the premiership, our, uh, like our Super Bowl. So let's build, um, you could build a vector of dates, or better yet, you could build a list that has, for the name of each component, the name of the team, and then the element of each component will be a vector of the dates that they that team won. So we do that. Okay, so here's our here are the dates that each of these teams won. So let's let's read that in. And we're just assembling a list. That's all we're doing. And the list will have three components, four components, five components, six components, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so we're done. We could look at that list. We could say, show me what it, what it looks like. I want to see premierships. And just as you suspect, it, it expresses it as a list with 12 components each component name of a team with the years they won okay well what can we do with that well a couple of things we can say let's say you wanted to know for any one year who's the winner now note in this example these years are non-redundant only one team can win so a year is only going to be the value for a year is going to be unique once. It's, they're not going to repeat. So um, let's say 1967. We want to know who won in 1967. We could, we could figure that out with a for loop like this. And this is the hard way to do it. We'll look at an easier way in a, in a moment. But um, So we assign a, a variable year with the value that we're interested in tracking. And then we use, just use a for loop where we walk through the length. And remember, length with lists work on components. So it'll do this. We have 12 components. It'll loop through this thing 12 times. And it will see if the year is in each component. If it is, it uses the names argument which is the team, and puts it in this variable winner. Now, because, because this is not in a function, this is just part of the code, we're, we're doing this in the global environment. We're not doing this in a uh, uh, scope in the, within the scope of uh, a function. So it's going to be in the global environment. So let's do this. So we do this. And if we look now in our workspace, there, there is a variable called winner, and it has a value, Richmond. And uh, if we go back up here into our structure, here's Richmond. Sure enough, they won in 1967. 
Now, this is certainly, or you could just say, show me the value of winner, which will will return the name there, Richmond. This is certainly a, a, a clunky way, a difficult way, a convoluted way to, to answer a question like that, but we're trying to demonstrate what you can do. So you can store information, and remember, you can have lists within lists. Each component can have different components, so you could be very intricate about how you store information and query query that information. Okay, so what about how do we deal with this complex structure of lists? Well, we're not going to talk about all of the apply family of functions, but there are there are a certain there's a handful of apply fam of, of apply functions that are really handy with lists, and uh, by extension, really handy with data frames because data frames are a type of list. Let's look at just a couple of those. Okay, t apply, often referred to as table table apply, is really good for um, getting for summarizing think of it as it's kind of like a tabulate but tabulate what tabulate does it counts tabulate will count the number of occurrences of unique values t apply will run simple numerical summaries like mean and standard deviation on the unique values of a categorical variable. Let's take a look first. Okay, I gave you this. You have UCF. Uh, let, me, let me check to make sure I did that. If not, I will put it in there right after. Yes, you have that. This is a CSV file. Let's, let's take a look, see what it looks like. I wonder if I can just pop on that. Computers are so slow. They're supposed to be much faster, but they're not. Okay, so here it is. Um, we have a file. 336 records. And uh, it's a tree data. So um, notice this is, um, plots are, this is data from a, a spatial, spatially replicated, a spatially pseudo-replication experiment. This is, a, you, this is a form, this is data that takes, is typical of a mixed, mixed effects model type experiment where you have trees within plots and then you have species, different species of trees Okay, where species, this is all categorical. This is categorical. These are tree, num the number, no, this is not categorical. These are the numbers of trees in each of these plots, and these are the species. This is the height. This is the diameter at, breath, at, bre at breast height. That is, if a man, a six-foot-tall man, stood up to the tree, this is the, the diameter of that tree at chest, at chest height. So when you say, what's the diameter of a tree? Well, it depends on if you're talking about at the ground or if you're talking about 10 feet up. So often this is used in many countries and cultures. DBH, diameter at breast height of a six foot man is used as the standard for you how you measure the, the width. Okay, so this is what we have. And so we're going to read, we read that in. And notice I'm just using uh, read CSV. You've got to put it in the right folder. You know, a really useful trick is this. And I usually do this. To save myself heartache.
And this will tell you if that file is there. It will well, tell you a couple of things. It'll tell you, first of all, and see, I, it's a good thing I did. I, I know the file is there. What's the problem? Well, the problem is my directory is not looking there. So if we say, um, get working get working directory this will tell us it's it's not temp okay so there's a couple of remedies i could either change the working directory to that or i could just simply reference the entire path name as i've done here so if i do that instead if i say c temp if you reference a file with the whole path name it doesn't matter where the directory is and that's the easy way also so if I do that file exists now it's true okay so I'm, I'm good to go so I'm going to use read CSV which has header set to true as the default and I'll put that in UFC and so now we could look at UFC and it is let me uh, stretch it out a little bit looks like this uh, notice when we looked at it in the spreadsheet all we had were these five columns uh, in fact we didn't have yes we did we had we had these five columns we did not have this what is this these are row names that were created when you executed this read CSV function, it does two things. It reads the CSV file, but it also changes it into a data frame. And I, I mentioned data frames must have names both for the rows and for the columns. My file already had names for the columns, but it did not have names for the rows. So R gives it names. They look like numbers, but they're not. Their names okay so that's what R does so now if we want to reference a variable we have to do it like this we have to say name of the file name of the dollar sign name of the variable so this is a vector these are just the tree heights this is that one vector height dot M remember species if we look at species species is this column these are obviously not numeric they're also not characters you, you never end up with characters in the data frame unless you coerce it it will it will take any text data when you create a data frame and it'll change it to factors it uh, data frames do not like strings they change them to factors. So knowing it's a factor, we could say, well, what are the unique values with the levels argument? So these are the four unique species. And note when we express levels, it expresses them with characters, but it's not text. Okay, so now we're going to use T apply against the different levels of species but for the numeric information and height what does that mean okay well we end up with the mean height based on the four unique values of species which are in a different column so t apply is like a fancy tabulate but it's not counting tabulate just counts you can this function can do anything crunch the numbers any way you want based on the levels of this variable and the numbers of this variable so it's like aggregate only it's better it does more things it's like summary but it's better and here's the general syntax for t apply note fun is function note this if you look at how we called it up here we made the call to t apply we only had three arguments we could have we left out this one what this argument does it doesn't pass 
any number of arguments to t apply, this argument, triple dot, allows you to pass functions, I'm sorry, allows you to pass arguments to this function. Very useful. If this, so you can apply any sort of complex function that may, may have its own arguments that are required. You can put them all in one statement. So any, if you had specific arguments for function, you just keep on listing them separated by commas, and it knows to put them in here. 